This is not a real architectural model. I've always admired people who has the patience to be architectural models. But for me, I've always hated the process of making a physical model. Especially as a student, it's such a waste of time to spend hours and hours making a physical maquette that you probably use once in your final presentation and then it be thrown away. However, I've always liked the look of it on my portfolio. It's just something different from the usual realistic renders that might help your portfolio stand out for the crowd. If you're like me, then it's time we stop spending time and money on physical maquettes and create digital ones. The best part is, it's really easy. I will show you how to do it in this video in this 4-step workflow. Each of them will have several important tips. Let's get started. Also, I will be using Lumion in this video. If you don't have Lumion, then you can use the link below to download it. And if you are an architecture or interior design student, you can get Lumion Pro for free. And shout out to Lumion for sponsoring this video. The first step is modeling, which I have 4 tips for you. Number 1. Less is more. A physical model of a building is always less detailed than a real building. So if I want to make a physical model version of this building, then I will need to remove the extra details so that it looks like this instead of this. You can see that this version looks a lot more like a physical model than this one. Which takes me to the second tip. Model it as if it was made of real parts. For example, if this was a real physical model, my glass windows would be made of a piece of clear plastic and thin rectangular dowels. Also, since a physical model is made of multiple pieces, the corners and joints need to look like this instead of this. In real life, you can also score the wood with a knife or engrave it with a laser cutter. So you can do the same in the 3D model to add details like these bricks between the exterior metal panels. Number 3. Turn your site into a contour model. Physical models often have this type of topography for the site. To do this, I will create a rectangular plane around my building and then make copies of it which are one foot apart. Next, I will intersect these planes with the site geometry. Then I will have these lines, which I can use to create contours in each of the planes like so. After that, I can extrude these planes to give us some thickness, and it's finished. The last modeling tip is very important, but before I show you this, let's move on to the materials, which I also have 4 tips for you. Number 1. Choose the right material. A physical architecture model can be made of lots of different materials. For me, I want to create a basswood material, so I will go to Polygon and download this free wood material here. Then we can extract it to get a different maps. Number 2 is applying the material correctly. When applying the material, make sure the wood grain is in the right direction. In SketchUp, you can right click a face and then go to Texture and rotate it. Note that you don't have to fix the UV of every face. Just use the bucket tool and press Alt and left click to sample the material. This will inherit the position as well, so you can apply it to other faces. And since we're making a physical model, which is a miniature version of a real building, the texture needs to be a lot bigger. So we can change it by using the material editor and increasing the size here. There's also the Fredo through paint tool, which you can use to fix UV issues on a complicated geometry like this. Next, I will import the model into Lumion using the Live Sync plugin and continue editing the material. Number 3. Use PBR workflow. To make the material more realistic in Lumion, I will use the maps that we downloaded earlier and place them in the appropriate texture slots. This is called a PBR or physically based rendering workflow. For this instance, I will only use the normal map. As for the glass material, I will edit it after I set up the render settings and I'll show you why later. I also use this option to soften the edges of the geometry because in the real world, objects don't have perfectly sharp corners. As for this last tip for the materials, it will be a lot easier to show you once I set up the render. Let's move on to number 3. Environment and Entourage Let's start with the environment. If you notice, you can see that the terrain in Lumion is blocking my contour site. To fix this, I will go back to my SketchUp model and move my model up like so. Since I have the Lumion Live Sync active, it will update automatically. Next, I will go to Landscape, Paint, and change the landscape preset to white. Then I will remove all the clouds by sliding the cloudiness slider to zero. Number two is adding assets and entourage. In the latest version of Lumion, there are stylized objects like these trees here, which are perfect for the look I'm going for. I can also use the cluster placement tool and add multiple trees at once like so. Note that we're trying to make a render of a physical model, so we don't need a whole force like when we're doing a realistic render. There are also stylized people as well. I will just add one right here. I don't need stylized vehicles in this model, but you can add them to yours if needed. 
Before we go to the render settings, let's go to the photo mode and create a camera view. For the focal length, I will set it to 60 millimeters. This will make it look like a close-up shot of the model instead of something that's wider, which would be more fitting for a realistic render. Remember, you can always go back and remove objects if it's blocking your model. Number four, render settings. The first step is sliding. To start, I will add the real sky's effect. In the latest version of Lumion, you can now load in a custom HDR image. So I will go to Poly Heaven. In the HDRI section, I will find a Studio HDRI. Let's try this one. 4 or 8K is good enough. And for the format, we will choose HDR. After we load it in, we can change the heading to get the right sun angle. Then I can adjust the sky brightness, sun intensity, and background brightness until I like the look of my render. Next, let's add the shadow effect and enable soft and fine detail shadows. I'll also set the shadow brightness to 0.2 so that it's a bit darker. Then let's add a skylight effect and turn on planar and project the reflections and set the render quality to 3 stars. Next, add a hyper light effect. For this, I will keep it at the default amount of 25%. Number 2, reflection and color correction. The reflection effect is also very important. By adding reflection planes, we can see the realistic reflection of the glass material. And this is why I waited until now to adjust the glass material. It's because in the build mode, we cannot see the realistic reflection. So the trick is to click this button. Now we can access the build mode while having the effects on, so we can adjust the glass material more accurately. The render is a bit dark, so I will add the color correction effect and increase the exposure. The basswood material I'm going for is a bit lighter than my current material. So I will go back to the build mode and reduce the slider a bit to blend it with the white color, making it a bit lighter. Now let's jump back to the last step for materials, which is surface imperfections. To add surface imperfections, the first option is to use the weathering slider to add some dirt in the edges of the material. But don't overdo it, just a little bit will work just fine. You can see that it makes the cracks and crevices in the material a lot easier to see. However, there's another way to make the cracks on these panels even more prominent. First, I will go to decals and I will use this paint decal here. While placing the decal, I can hold L and drag to scale it. Then I will change the color to black. Next, I can adjust the range to really small, and then I can move the decal so that it's only affecting the cracks. Then I can duplicate it if needed. And finally, I can use this slider to blend it with the wood material below. There we go. Now I will also show you the last modeling tip which is adding gaps between parts. As you can see, when it's rendered, you can't see the gaps between the geometry. To make it more realistic, I will add a small gap between the different parts of the model like so. This is another reason why using the LiveSync plugin is really useful. There we go. It's very subtle, but it does make it look more like an actual physical model. Then let's get back to the render settings and continue with step 3, which is camera effects. For this step, I will add a depth of fill effect. This will make the render look more like a photograph that was taken with a large aperture, which results in a shallow depth of fill. This will make it look like we have a small physical model in front of us. Pretty cool, huh? And number four, final adjustment. For the final adjustment, you can use the LUT color grading function to change the tones of your image. There are several presets that you can use, or you can load a custom LUT file if you like. Alternatively, you can use Photoshop to make the final edits. In my case, I will use the camera raw filter to make some final adjustments to the highlights and shadows, as well as increasing the texture and clarity to bring out the details. There we go, you can repeat these steps and render different angles of your model. I actually have a bonus tip for step 3, which is setting up different backgrounds. Sometimes when people take pictures of a real physical model, they will place it against a black background. If you want to do that, then create a new geometry like this for your 3D program. Next, apply a black color to it. Now we can import it into Lumion and scale it up like so. You can also change the color of it if you like. Also, if you put this geometry on a separate layer, then you can hide and unhide it in your renders. You can do the same with different lighting scenarios. Like here, I added the lights manually instead of using HDRI. Or maybe if you have time, you can apply a darker color on the edges of the wood pieces, which is usually a result of using a laser cutter. Feel free to experiment on your own, the possibilities are endless. And that's how you can create a render physical model, also known as a digital maquette. If you like this video, check out this tutorial on the fastest way to create architectural floor plans. Thanks bye guys and I'll see you next time.